Hello folks, MinMax Munchkin finally back to deliver potentially the craziest character you've seen on this channel so far. I know, I know, it took me way too long to get this video up on the channel, but it's been a challenge to come to terms with the class and level distributions, not going to lie. However, let's not waste any more precious time, let's just jump straight into it. The main idea behind this character was pretty simple, deal as much damage as possible with a single attack, but do it in in a way that's somewhat consistent and reproducible and not just relying on dumb luck. After months of fiddling with it, I came up with a melee oriented character. In terms of race, there are only really two options to choose from Asimar or Goblin. Both can deal extra damage equal to the character level, but overall Goblin is better because even though his trait has some size limits, it doesn't require an action to activate. And let's be honest, whatever it is that's worth dumping 500 plus damage into is not going to be small or tiny in size, most likely, right? Background is fairly easy to choose too. Both the criminal and the urban bounty hunter both provide stealth skill proficiency and they fit the theme of the character seamlessly. Point by is a mess and it has to be unfortunately, because you will need a total of 6 classes to make this character work as intended. I chose a dex heavy approach mostly because of the assassinate feature, which is basically the only reliable way to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, all with one quick finger stabbing motion. But uh, no, but seriously, to make this melee assassin rogue a true one hitter, you need to significantly boost its damage potential, because a sneak attack just won't cut it. Paladin's Divine Smite is a no-brainer, I think anybody who follows this channel could have guessed that by uh, now. But to get the spell slots needed for it, you need 10 levels of Whisper's Bard. That's the only subclass which on top of the faster spell slot progression can further improve the damage of this character via its Psychic Blades feature. Add in one level of Divine Sorcerer for the Booming Blade and Favored by the Gods feature and you are already rolling a crap ton of damage dice while ensuring your attack rolls do not miss. But if you still think that's not enough, you're kind of right. Cue the Munchkinery via the Absorb Elements spell. See, on page 190 of the Player's Handbook of 5th edition, it is written that drinking all the ale in a flagon is an example of a free object interaction. So following that logic, drinking a bit of acid from a vial should also be a free object interaction, right? One that you can use your reaction on to cast the 7th level Absorb Elements for additional 14d6 critical acid damage. Of course, right? But that's not all, far from it. In order to surpass the 500 damage mark, you need to make the target vulnerable to all of your attack's damage. The way to do that is via Path of the Grave Channel Divinity, which you get access to with a 2 level dip into the Grave Domain Cleric. The only issue with this Channel Divinity is the fact that it requires an action to activate. That's why you need to reserve 2 levels of this build for the good old fighter and its level 2 action surge feature. With two actions, you can both activate Path of the Grave Channel Divinity and attack in a single turn. In fact, you should probably start in Fighter anyway to have an easier time passing Concentration Saving Throws with its Constitution Saving Throw proficiency. Obviously, as is the case with most Assassin Rogues, you do need some feats. You only really have two ability score improvements, but you only really need two feats. Sadly, this will cap your Dexterity score at 16, but but that won't be a big issue as you will see shortly. The two feats, as some of you may have already guessed, are Lucky and Alert. Lucky is mandatory, you need to pass a stealth check if you are setting up a surprise via hide action, Lucky fixes a bad roll. You need a high attack roll result to ensure that one, of one and only attack that you are making actually beats the target's armor class. And of course, you also need a high initiative roll, because your assassinate feature relies super heavily on it. Alert feed further stacks the odds in your favor by providing a flat plus 5 bonus to initiative and Bard's Jack of all trades feature adds additional plus 3 or half of your proficiency bonus to your initiative modifier as well. And if Tasha's cauldron of everything is allowed, I mean how can it not be allowed when the DM allowed you to play this monstrosity of a character in the first place, then to further solidify the chances of your attack rolls hitting the targets, superior technique 
fighting style is a godsend for that precision battle master maneuver adding additional 1d6 to your attack roll with so many different classes in the mix you obviously have a bunch of other features and spells very few are actually useful for the purpose of this character however i do have to point out dimension door spell which if you are deliberate in your actions can be a much more elegant and efficient way to ambush and surprise your enemy instead of sneaking up to it and risking getting exposed against its potential special senses such as blind sense or tremor sense freedom of movement can also help alleviate some in environmental obstacles preventing you from getting in melee with your enemy before it detects your presence and ruins your surprise. I also think that Skyride can be very fun too, I mean it's not really useful but you know you can leave your signature in the sky after each successful one hit kill, something ominous like the Mord's Mordre curse in Harry Potter, I probably butchered the pronunciation of that but I mean I don't know you can also just doodle some dicks in between the stars, I mean it's your choice really. Damage calculation is rather straightforward for this character there's only really one attack so just stack all these spells and features and feats and your accuracy and your damage will be through the roof only god tier monsters like Tarask or Tiamat can survive this much damage assuming you roll that average I've seen several 46 damage fireballs though I've also seen one 47 damage fireball by the way 48 is the absolute max damage for a level 3 fireball so you never really know dice do have a mind of their own. Progression is basically an afterthought if you ask me, because you need all 20 levels for this character to feel truly complete. Sure, you can give it a go in tier 3, maybe it can even work in tier 2, but you will be missing out on a lot of juice. Still, you can see on the screen how I would go about leveling this character up, at least in theory. Role playing this character presents an interesting opportunity from my point of view. Sure, you can lean into the tried and tested lone wolf archetype, an independent mercenary on the lookout for the next best and most lucrative high profile hit job to amass more gold, more power and more respect. But there is an alternative route to explore, one that I would be more interested in as a player. See, with six different classes in the mix. It's safe to say that this deadly little goblin has been exposed to a lot of transformative experiences and schools of thought. Due to all of that he could have easily developed a certain level of self-awareness. He knows that his immense power comes at a cost. He knows he is a one-trick pony who, after blowing his load all over the like, subscribe and notification bell buttons, doesn't have much left to continue fighting. For that reason he is actively seeking a companion. Maybe even a gang or a group of adventurers to cover for his weaknesses and be there to deal with problems he's not best qualified to deal with. He can easily dispatch a lone unsuspecting pit fiend without really breaking a sweat, but when he gets surrounded by a horde of giants he's suddenly feeling vulnerable. For such reasons he knows he can't do everything alone, he needs help. And that might be a great way to have him join both an adventuring party as a reluctant hero or maybe a villainous gang as their infamous hitman. And for you DMs that are hellbent on using this monster to kill off one of your player characters. Just take it easy, okay? We players all know that you have the biggest cocks at the table, so please swing them responsibly. As you can see me scrolling through it on the screen, I've prepared the usual word file that I have for characters like this one. I went a bit more into detail about some things and did my best to clarify potentially confusing or contradicting information. If you would like to download this file, head on over to my Patreon page and pledge into the Magical Secrets tier. It's not mandatory, it's 100% optional, especially in these troubled globally challenging economic times. But if you do find the Patreon perks worth the trouble, worth your time and worth your money, consider supporting my efforts there. Special shout out to all of my current patrons. Mike, Matthew, Ewing, Barley, Man, Harley, Trying, Kellerun, Suburban Hell, Corey Close, and Gary Kors, Brad Oldham, Joel Salcazar, Sean Manosi, Stefano, Crack Mask, Alexandre Ode, Francisco Martinez, Keelan Odell, 18, Russ Helms, Ted Rygard, Stephen Keezer, Devon Troger, James Orendo, Wesley Schick, Jacob Nether, N7, Frost Hawk, Kyler Beverly, Primal Bass, Boost, Jacob Salters, Thomas Gardner, Sharby, Bur Burley Bjorn, Super Neil, AB Codes, The Undead Owl Goddess, Tooth and Nail Rule, Sterling Garza, Alec Greenwood, Ma Maher Cute, Giorgio Scritzotakis, Harley Long, Alvis Yang, Clay Puma, Maximus S, Anthony Gardoni, Taylor Cook, William Yori, Kelly Bolduc, Sean Raven, Brian Wolf, Malatros, Justin Blakenship, John Bush, Jack Brown, Roder 2C, Roberto Bonilla, um, Adam Holbrook, Vane Potter, John Finnegan, R.J. Davidson, Richard M. Odegaard, Ryan Rosnecht, Marcus Dixon, Sean 
Sean Connery, Dan M. Aldo Abraham, Daniel Brown, Xeron King, Tracy J. Armstrong, Tetsus Saiga, Johnny Magic, Zach Atkins, Daniel Emery, Michael Hubbard, Brody, Etozex, Christopher Lee Sauce, Michael Bigley, Ike I, Andrew J. Black, Eric Stai, Micah Thomas, All Star Records, Heavier Ray Brooks, Aaron Sager, Thomas Van Irsel, Ramos Ulter, Jeff Holmes, Chris Dofford, Medic WQ, Zach Cody, Kabaru Bias, Crouching Emu Hidden Lama, Alan Crawford, Josh Matthew, Evan Klein, Zach Martina, Three Big Feet, Justice Vincent, Leonidas Spiropoulos, Jethro Teal, Slimeball, Carlo Filomena Yao, Jeremy Anderson, Shane Hoofen, Francis August Valenzola, Alejandro Nagy, Jordan Hibben, Sniper 061, Jessica Ryan, Billy Green, Luke Dalde Road, Jesus Espinoza, Chris Smith, Alex True, Kieran Lemon. Sorry for butchering half your names. Thank you for continued support. I'll make sure you get many more videos like this one in the following weeks and months. With everything said and done, Min Max Munchkin out. Talk to you soon.